my first mock draft of the off season is here. I was gonna drop this this past Monday, but since you know the coaching stuff came out, I decided to push it back to today. Now mock drafts. If you're new to the channel, if you weren't here with me last year, I do about five or six of them in the off season. You know. Obviously, because players are always falling and rising due to pro days, scouting combines, or they go out and do something stupid, or, you know, just other things. Pe teams address needs and free agency as well. So, that's why mock drafts are hardly ever going to be the same. There are some players that I'm probably going to fall in love with throughout the process, so you probably will see them, some of them at least. In multiple of my mock drafts and before we get started I just want to let you guys know I don't do trades I think trades are dumb trades are unpredictable so this mock draft is just based off the picks we have and that's it no trades just what we have and before I get started you know I hardly ever set a light goal but since everybody's been waiting for my mock draft can we get you know let's hit 80 likes I never set a like goal but if you guys can hit 80 likes then you know i'll probably drop another mock draft sooner than later i guess anyways let's get into this with the first pick well the 23rd pick in the first round i have our houston texans selecting dalton reisner right tackle out of kansas state now shout out to my best bud duck aka rising phoenix for you know really putting me onto this guy he's been really high on reisner for a while now, and you know, I don't start looking at players till like the Super Bowl is over, really. So you know, I started to watch them, and I'm not gonna lie, Doug found him a good one. This guy is really good. He's six five, three hundred and ten pounds. He's great in pass protection, great run blocker, great hand usage. He's nasty, meaning he finishes his blocks. You know how you see Quentin Nelson teabag a guy after he knocks him down? Well, you know, you probably won't see Reisner teabag someone, but he definitely knocks him down and he makes sure they stay down. And in my opinion, the Texans need someone like that that's nasty on the O-line to, you know, give this O-line attitude. This O-line is full of soft players honestly I mean Kendall Lamb he has a baby face Davenport you can tell he's soft Kilometi he gets pushed around I mean Martin maybe he's not that soft Fulton maybe he's not that soft but you know for the most part this old line is soft now you're probably wondering why a guy that sounds this good is gonna fall to the Texans to 23 well you know Scouts, experts, they always find an issue with good players. The apparent issue with Dalton Reisner is he's got short arms. To me, that's not an issue. I mean, Dwayne Brown had short arms. He was considered a small tackle, and look how good he was for us for all those years. So, you know, I do think Reisner will be for us here, and I do think Reisner will be the correct pick, and I would be happy if the Texans picked him. And it honestly wouldn't shock me if the Texans picked him because they met with him at the Senior Bowl and they asked Reisner if he'd like to play for the Texans and he said, yeah. And then one of the questions that they asked Reisner at the Senior Bowl was, what position are you most comfortable in? And he straight up said right tackle. A lot of, the, a lot of these other linemen will, you know, give you the answer. I could play anywhere, even though that's not true. Reisner is a right tackle. He's going to be a right tackle in the NFL. He played right tackle for Kansas State for four years. He is a right tackle. And if the Texans drafted him, they'd have their right tackle of the future for 12 to 15 years. That's what it is. Now, the reason I didn't pick a left tackle is because I don't think the Texans are going to give up on Julian Davenport, unfortunately. But I do see them bringing in a right tackle to you know, take over that right tackle spot. Now, in the second round, 21st pick. I have the Houston Texans selecting Julian Love, cornerback out of Notre Dame. Now, Julian Love, he's fast, he's quick, he breaks on the ball really well, 
He has great recovery speed, meaning if he gets beat, he's most likely going to, you know, catch up to the receiver. Hardly ever gets beat, though. He has great route recognition. He's smart when the ball's in the air. He pushes receivers to the sideline when the receivers are running down the sideline. So it makes it harder for the quarterback to complete the pass. It makes the window tighter. He fights for the ball. He's a good tackler. Now, again, like Ryzen, you're probably wondering, man, if this guy's this good, what is wrong with him? He's 5'10". Some places have him listed at 5'11". Some places have, have him listed at 5'10". But he's 5'10". That is literally the problem with Love. If Love was six feet tall, six foot one, he would have been a first round pick. But right now he's being, you know, kind of predicted to go in the second round. I really like Love. I mean, yes, he's a little short, but we need a guy with speed at the corner position and Love is that guy. We have a T.Y. Hilton problem. And in my opinion, you bring in Julian Love, you stop that T.Y. Hilton problem. It's gone. I think he's a guy who can match up really well with those speedy, fast receivers. Now for the next pick in the second round. I believe this is the 23rd pick overall in the second round. And honestly, some people might not like this pick. But when I do mock drafts, I don't just do one mock draft. You know, stick with it and that's it. I release that. I do multiple mock drafts. See how the players are falling and see how many times they're there and are they going to be there for me multiple times and this guy he was there for me a lot like more often than not who is that guy that's Marquise Brown wide receiver Oklahoma now this guy <laughs> I see him going in the first round as of right now some people have him as a late first early second type of guy but after he runs his 40 in the combine, I'm pretty sure he's going to shoot up because, you know, people love speed. But yeah, he's 5'11", 170 pounds. He's fast. He's projected to run a mid 4'3", yeah, mid 4'3", 40 time. He has quick bursts, good hands. He's a great deep threat. He's fast off the line of scrimmage. He easily beats the press. And to me, all around... He's a good receiver, a perfect backup to Will Fuller. I mean, his NFL comparison is T.Y. Hilton. The Texans have a T.Y. Hilton problem, so why not get one of our own, you know? Get our own T.Y. Hilton. Now, obviously, I know what you guys are going to say. Why would you pick a backup in the second round? I understand that. I get it. But to me, and this is just me. You guys don't have to think this way. This is just me. Whenever... You have a guy like Marquise Brown fall to you at any point. You know, just a good player in general that should have went in the first round. You got to pick him. You know, you, you don't pass up talent like this, in my opinion. Now, obviously, he has to have some issues because most players have issues. Unless, you know, you're like that perfect prospect, Andrew Luck type of guy. Now, his issues... There is some durability concerns because he is 170 pounds. He needs to put on some weight. And he has a limited route tree, so he doesn't run all the routes. You know, like Wolf Fuller coming out. He, he has the complete route tree. He could run any route. Marquise Brown isn't like that. He can only run certain routes, or he was only asked to run certain routes in Oklahoma. And the last thing, his hands aren't that strong, meaning... He goes up for the ball. He has it in his hands. The DB can knock it down off his hands. You know, like D-Hop. Once it's in his hands, it's in his hands. It's probably not getting knocked out. This guy, you could probably knock it out. Now, the next guy. Third round, 22nd overall pick. I have the Texans selecting Rock Yassin, cornerback out of Temple. Yes, the Texans absolutely have to double dip. At cornerback this season in my opinion. Or this draft in my opinion. Because our cornerback spot is atrocious. Now Rock. He's really been shooting up the draft boards as of late. And if he has a strong pro day in scouting combine. He might even go as early as early second round. Because there's a lot to love about this guy. I mean he's 6'2", 190 pounds. You know a bigger guy. 
He's great in man-to-man. -man. He's physical. He's a press co corner. He plays a wide receiver great, similar to Julian Love. You know, tightens up that window for the quarterback, makes it harder for him to drop the ball in there. He's a willing one-on-one -on -one tackler, meaning if he's one-on-one, -on -one, he will make the tackle or he will attempt the tackle. But he's also not one of those guys that will jump in to help his teammates out to make a tackle. And I'm not just saying, you know, like if there's one guy struggling, he's not going to go help. He is going to go help. But like if there's like three guys trying to bring down one guy, he's not going to be one of those guys that, you know, jump jump in there. So, you know, to me, that's not really an issue. You know, kind of trying to protect himself, playing smart. Now, his speed, he has decent speed in my opinion. He's projected to run a low 4 five forty. And you're probably wondering the same thing. What are his problems? Well, he has some footwork issues. His footwork issues limit him to only a man corner at the moment, meaning he can only play man. Zone coverage, you probably can't play him there because he'll probably get beat. His footwork issues get him beat on double moves sometimes. You guys are familiar with corners that get beat with double moves. Sharice Wright got beat all last year. With double moves now. This guy's not as bad as Sharice Wright. You know, inviting four double moves. But, you know, it is there. And, you know, his footwork causes him to, you know, take false steps. And he gets beat because of it. Now, you're probably wondering, if this guy has footwork issues, why would we take him? Well, I mean, I don't see this guy starting day one. The Texans have one guy on the roster who is really smart and has survived in this league a very long time due to his precise technique, and that's Jonathan Joseph. I think if Rocky Sin sits behind Jonathan Joseph for, you know, a year, I think Rocky Sin can turn into a solid corner because Joseph, he has everything about his technique down. The reason Joseph has survived in this league this long is because of that. I mean, we already know. Joseph is slow. He's old. We get it. Athleticism left him a while ago. But he survived still. Why? Because he has perfect footwork, perfect technique, perfect everything about Joseph. It's just, you know, his athleticism isn't there anymore. So if Joseph could take this guy under his wing, this guy's going to be very good, meaning the Texans will have their one and two corners of the future. Julian Love... And Rockison. Now, I understand if you don't like this pick. And personally, my usually when I do mock drafts, my first, second, and third round picks usually tend to be day one starters, day one contributors. But you know, in this case, I'm okay with drafting Rock to eventually take over that Jonathan Joseph role while Julian Love is that other day one starting corner. Now, we don't have a 4th round pick, so from here on out, 5th, 6th, and 7th, these are more like back of the roster, kind of backup type of guys. And with the 5th round pick, I have the Texans selecting Mike Weber, running back out of Ohio State. He is 5'10", 215 pounds. He has good vision. He's a downhill runner, meaning he's not going to dance around in the backfield. He just hits the hole and goes. That's it. He's... Kind of elusive, he bounces off tackles. He has a stocky build, so it helps him with short yardage situations, meaning you need a tough yard. This guy will probably get you that tough yard. He's a pretty decent receiver, you know, catch passes off the backfield. Now, his issues, he's not fast by any means. Lamar Miller is way faster than this guy. He's not good in pass protection. He doesn't really make people miss in open space. And in my opinion, this guy is a rotational guy, not a starter. So this guy is not going to go in there and overthrow Lamar Miller. This guy is going to go over there and help out Lamar Miller. This guy is, you know, what Alfred Blue is supposed to be. Alfred Blue is supposed to be a guy that falls for it, but Alfred Blue just runs and then he falls for a one-yard gain. That's all Alfred Blue does. This guy can actually get those tougher yards. And I think he'll be a perfect complement to Lamar Miller because I do not think the Texans are planning to part ways with Lamar Miller. Now, sixth round pick, I have the Texans selecting Porter Gustin, outside linebacker out of USC. 6'4", 
255 pounds. He's strong. He's good off the ball. He's a decent pass rusher and a good edge setter, meaning, you know, he's not going to be one of those guys that lets the running back bounce the ball outside. He's going to do his job. Now, his problem, he doesn't do well after he's initially beat, meaning he doesn't, like, really know what to do after that. I think someone like Anthony Weaver, our D-Lions coach, can really coach him up and, you know, give him some moves, show him what to do. If we keep merciless, merciless can... You know, take him under his wing. And he has injury concerns. But, I mean, at this point, because of the injury concerns, this guy is dropping down to the sixth round. If he didn't have injury concerns, he would have been a fourth rounder. And his last issue, he has some stiff hips. If you guys know, you know, edge rushers got to have those, you know, loose hips so they can, you know, get around and get to the quarterback. So, this guy, in my opinion, he can be a good situational pass rusher for the Texans, a rotational guy. I don't see him as a starter. In my opinion, Duke Ezra Ford is a better player than this guy. But in the NFL, you can never have enough pass rushers. And the Texans don't really have many. It's just really Watt, Clowney, Merciless, and Ezra Ford. They don't even use Ezra Ford. So, why not throw in Porter Gustin as well? Now, the last guy, I have Texans selecting the seventh round, Ulysses. Gilbert the third. He's 6'1", 230 pounds. He's projected to run a 40 time of a mid 4'5", so like, you know, 4'5", 5, 5. He flies around and makes tackles. He plays downhill. He's decent in coverage. Now, his issues, he isn't good at block shedding, but he does avoid blocks pretty well. He's not that strong, and sometimes he doesn't wrap up. But for the most part... He is, you know, a pretty good tackler, and he's a winning tackler, too. Now, this guy, what do I see for him? I see him as a special teamer. I see him being the guy the Texans think <laughs> Brian Peters is, because Brian Peters is supposed to be the special team's ace, and he's not. He, he don't do anything, let's be honest. And when Brian Peters gets thrown out there in a game... You know, on actually defense, he sucks. This guy, he can at least hold his own out there and not get beat like Brian Peters. I mean, literally every time I saw Brian Peters out there playing for the Texans on defense, they'd target him and he'd get beat. This guy at least can hold his own and he'd be a way better special teamer than Brian Peters because he can actually fly around and make tackles. He'll probably be one of the first guys down the field to make the tackle. So, you know, here late in the draft, I pretty much just pick players like this, special teamers, rotational guys, those type of players, because at this point, you're not really expected to get many starters. And yeah, that is my first mock draft of the offseason. Comment down below what you think of this mock draft. And yeah, if you want to do your own mock draft, I use two websites. And I don't really prefer one. I think they're both good. But you can use whichever one you want, whichever one you're more comfortable with. And that's firstpick.com and fanspeak.com. I'll put the link of those websites in the description. And yeah, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace.